Hey everyone, so over the past few days I've been doing a few player bounties and I wanted to make a video about it. This is the last video I'm going to upload before the giveaway ends though, so if you want to enter, be sure to do so. Okay, for this video I have a few clips of me doing some player bounty hunting, but I'm going to be discussing my thoughts on bounty hunting in general right now instead of narrating what's going on in the clips. If you'd be interested in me narrating what I'm doing instead, you can let me know in the comments and I can do that in the future, but I just wanted to talk about my experience with bounty hunting right now and how I hope it'll change in the future. So the first thing that I'd like to see changed is the way that the marker that appears on the bounty behaves, because right now it has a few issues. I know that this isn't going to be the permanent way that bounty hunting is done, since they want it to be a more in-depth and realistic experience, but I think there could be a few changes made to it right now that would make it less frustrating for both the hunters and the bounties. So first, I'd like the marker to be less buggy in general, because right now there's all sorts of issues with it. So if you're not at the same planet as your bounty target, then the marker is basically useless because it just glitches all over the place and it doesn't give you a precise view of where your target is. I think making this more accurate for now would be a nice quality of life improvement, just because it doesn't take that much time to clear your crime stat right now, so it'd be nice to know that your bounty is already at Security Post Korea or wherever they're clearing it, just so that you don't waste your time jumping to have them have it cleared by the time you get there. Another thing I'd like to see is that the marker isn't as accurate when the bounty is on foot. Right now it's very hard to win any sort of FPS combat if you're the target of a bounty because your hunter can see exactly where you are. With prisons being in the game now, I don't think it's fair to people with bounties to basically be given no chance in FPS combat. So for right now, I'd be happy with the marker going away once you're in a certain range of the target, something close to 500 or 1000 meters. I hope that eventually the marker system will be replaced with something else though, because I think having to identify your target based on leads and some incomplete information would be a lot more fun. They could even take some inspiration from the Mandalorian and have something like a tracker fob that just gives you feedback on whether or not you're close. Now, I think this sort of hunting and tracking will have to be only for NPC bounties, at least for a while, so that you don't have to worry about the person you're chasing logging out and wasting a bunch of your time, but I'm looking forward to some more nuanced tracking gameplay in the future. Another thing that I hope has changed is being able to surprise your bounties. So I know I'm flying a stealth ship in this video, which should let me do that, but I'm talking about something else. I mean doing things like setting up traps for your target and hitting them when they're not expected, because right now, as a bounty, it's pretty easy to know when you're vulnerable and when you're going to be attacked. Since you're in armistice zones so much of the time right now, and the time when you're not in them is usually spent in ships, it's really hard to sneak up on someone. Right now, this makes it feel like bounty hunting is just legal PvP, and it's missing a lot of the planning and tactical elements that I think would make it a lot more fun. So for me, a lot of the reason I like Star Citizen is because of how much I like Star Wars, and I think it would be cool if bounty hunting in Star Citizen eventually resembled what you see in Star Wars. Boba Fett has always been a really popular character for a reason, and he didn't just go around blindly shooting at people. So I hope that Armistice Zones go away sometime in the future to allow for this sort of gameplay. I don't think the game is ready for it yet, but once the prison system is really nailed down, I think this could be a change that is coming. The issue is that it's going to be really hard to balance the punishment so that piracy is viable but griefing is not. It's going to be hard to stop people who only play the game occasionally from just logging in and causing havoc at major stations and trade ports while still allowing pirates to have a fun experience. I'm not sure what kind of solution they'd have for this, but I hope it's good because griefing is both not fun and not realistic, but piracy is an important thing to have in the verse. So the last thing I noticed while doing this is a lot of negativity around torpedoes, and this might be another hard problem for CIG to solve. So if you're hunting right now, you're almost forced to use torpedoes because otherwise, Unless your target wants to dogfight, they can just run and quantum jump away from you. Torpedoes or smaller missiles are really the only way that you have a chance of taking them out before they can jump away. There are a few things though that I think could help solve this. So first of all, the flight changes coming in 3.10 might help with it, because from the information we've gotten so far, it seems like they want ships to operate more within their SCM ranges, and this might make it so that interceptors can keep up and do more damage to the target the whole time they're trying to run away instead of the way it is right now, where most ships can quickly accelerate to a thousand meters a second and run away from you really quickly and make a big gap to where you can't hit them. 
Also, I'd like to see a lot of the restrictions on quantum enforcement devices lifted, because as far as I'm aware, you get a crime stat for using them at all if you're in monitored space. I don't think this should be the case, because allowing for these quantum dampeners to actually be used would allow both the Mantis and the Cutlass Blue to have some more utility, and allow for hunters to take out their targets without having to resort to using torpedoes. And then also, I hope torpedoes themselves get changed a bit in the future, because right now they're pretty inconsistent in their behavior, and having them work in a consistent way I think would be good for both parties involved. So one thing I know that is going to get fixed, thankfully, is the 5-7 to seven second delay the Eclipse tends to have when shooting torpedoes. I was really confused by this when I was using the ship, but I'm glad to know that it was just a bug and not something I was doing wrong, and that it's already being addressed. But also, the torpedoes in general just seem to be really erratic in their behavior. Sometimes they fly straight by the target, sometimes they fly super slow and just explode on their own, and sometimes they kill things from 15 kilometers away. So instead of having them be the way they are right now, where it seems like it's almost a coin flip of whether or not they're going to kill someone, I would enjoy some consistent behavior from the torpedoes, but that is also counterable by the person that is being shot at. Again, going back to Star Wars, I really liked that chase with Jango Fett and Obi-Wan, and to have torpedoes where you could intelligently avoid them would be a lot more fun than just an I win button that works inconsistently. Another thing that they will probably do is make torpedoes a lot more expensive, so that you're not just throwing them around all the time. So even with those changes, there'd still probably be some people who complain about torpedoes, but I think it would make it a lot better. So to wrap this up, I want to make it clear that I'm not complaining, and I had a lot of fun chasing people around the verse, but I'm looking forward to a more developed bounty hunting system that allows for more diverse ways of taking down your targets in the future. And like I said, I'll be announcing the giveaway winner in the next video, so be sure to be checking your inboxes around the 15th to see if you won. And thanks for watching.